Everyone, welcome to episode number 76 of our Unshakable podcast. Today, I'm flying solo, so you just got me. So it's not as spicy as it usually is or spunky with Pastor Brandy. But I'll try my best to make up for what she brought. So now it's going to be a good one today. Um, we uh, obviously in our past uh, couple Sundays, we've been on a series called Draft Day. Usually we don't do a two-part series and that's it. It's usually at least three but most of the time fours, uh, four weeks of, of a series. But this time we did a two-week series calling it Draft Day. If you haven't been with us, let me just give you a little synopsis about it. Uh, we're taking it from NFL football. Of course, uh, we just all saw, well, some of us saw the Super Bowl this past Sunday. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, I was cheering for Brock Purdy. Um, you know, I got to uh, know a little bit more about him this year, just his own testimony and his uh, bold stance about his relationship with Jesus Christ. So even though San Francisco 49ers have been a pain in our butts as the Dallas Cowboys over the years, I was pulling for them because of Brock Purdy, because I'm more of a kingdom man than I am an NFL man. Can you say amen? But, uh, but you know, we didn't win, but he, Lord, the Lord did give him a platform to be able to give his voice out there. But we were, you know, taking this series that we did called Draft Day off of all of this. And in the NFL, um, if you don't know this, they have what they call Draft Day. It's not just one day, actually. It's a three-day event over a weekend. And we have it coming up. Uh, they have it coming up, I should say, at the latter part of April this year. And that's going to be done in, in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, it's a big event for people, obviously, who love the NFL or watch that and for the NFL themselves and their teams because they're drafting collegiate players to come on uh, the various teams, the 32 teams. And they're trying to, obviously, the teams are trying to make winning teams. That's what what they're doing. They're, they're, they're looking at the, the seven rounds that they get. They get seven different draft choices over seven rounds. And they're trying to get um, what they need or what they're lacking on their team. So it's a big deal. It's a big money event. It's a big thing for, uh, you know, franchises to see if they can get um, closer to winning a championship. Of course, that's what everybody wants to do. So we went off of this because obviously God uh, has given us the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, Jesus already won the battle. So, so one, one way we could say it is that he's already g- given us the victory. We already win. But in order for everyone on the earth to win, they have to get on the team of Jesus. They have to come and get born again. So there is a perpetual draft day, if you want to say it that way, that uh, Jesus has put out. God the Father has put out to all of humanity. Uh, and whoever will let him come, the Bible says. And so we've talked about how that God does put out that call. Many are called, but few are chosen. And then we looked at the scriptures uh, about some people in the Bible that were unlikely draft picks or choices that Jesus chose on his team. Uh, Matthew, or Levi is another uh, uh, name for Matthew, son of Alphaeus. He, he was a tax collector back in that day. The Bible says that tax collectors were considered notorious sinners. They were thieves. They were robbers. They were hated by the Jews. They were hated by the Romans. Uh, They uh, obviously uh, lined their pockets with the people of Israel, the people there in their districts uh, by not just gathering the taxes for the Romans, but as well adding more to it, cheating them. And so they were hated. And Jesus comes by Matthew's tax collector's booth at one point Uh, while he was there. And he calls Matthew out and says, Matthew, come follow me. And I'm sure that when maybe his disciples, some of the disciples that were with Jesus at the time heard it. I know the Pharisees, we have a report of what they thought when they heard it, they were all shocked. At least a lot of them were and like, why would, why would Jesus call Matthew? Uh, Because then it goes on to talk about how that, uh, you know, after Matthew left his tax collector's booth and business, and he followed Jesus, he invited Jesus to come into his home as a guest, along with the other disciples and with other, with some other of his friends. So some of his friends, or I should say, from what we could tell, all of his friends were notorious sinners as well. They were, they were the outcasts of society, so to speak. 
Uh, most people did not like their uh, Matthew's friends, and um, they maybe were other tax collectors or other really just people with really a low, bad reputation in society. And so the Pharisees were like, man, why would the, why would the teacher, why would Jesus associate with such scum? One translation says it that way, such scum. And that's how they considered them. And, uh, but you know, Jesus, he doesn't look on the outward appearance. He doesn't look how, what everybody else thinks about God, God and Jesus, Holy Spirit. They look, they look at the heart of the person. And there's obviously something within Matthew that Jesus saw that was longing for truth, that wanted change. And when he called Matthew, Matthew just left everything and he followed Jesus. And I love that story because Matthew just didn't go, well, I'll follow you from a distance, but I'm still going to do my stuff on the side, or I'm going to still have my tax collector's booth, but I'll follow you when you're in town. Matthew, from what we can tell, he just got up and just left everything and he started following Jesus. And that is just a 180 turn there where uh, he just was going one way and went another way. That's really repentance. That's what repentance is about. Now, it's not that Matthew had it all figured out, and I'm sure he was a pain in the butt on the, on the discipleship team for a while. I'm sure they had to work through their issues with Matthew, but the fact of it was is that Matthew came to Jesus, and he sold out the whole route, went his way. And we also look, just looked in the scriptures where Paul had said that when God calls people, he really chooses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise of this world. And isn't that so true? Most of us in Christianity, we did not have some high pedigree or we weren't from the elitist group in society or maybe well known in our cities or our state or our nation. Uh, most of us were maybe considered nobodies or you know, people that, well, you know, that we really weren't anything, we're not anything important. Some of us, maybe a lot of us were people that maybe society would even look at like a scum, but thank God Jesus's call went to all of us. And for as many that will come comes and those that will choose to be chosen are chosen. And thank God that, that, that us as believers, God's taken us as nobodies and he's turned us into somebodies. He's drafted us onto his team, onto team Jesus. So you know, this coming Sunday, we're having a big day here at church, and we're starting a new series called Family Matters. It's a, it's an attractional series so that we can invite people from our community uh, to come to this series, people that are unchurched or that are non-churched, people who maybe used to go to church but have gone to maybe people that were once in the kingdom and has now uh, backslid in some way, those that whatever, where, wherever they are, but they're just not part of a local church. We're trying to go after as many of them as we possibly can on this big day, starting this Family Matter series and believing that that will be uh, like a hook, like a bait and a hook that will bring people in to hear more about how they can get their, their marriages helped or fixed, their families helped and fixed. And that's our goal here. And so we're, we have an all out push. It's our draft day, so to speak, where we're really going after people to see as many people as they can get here this Sunday so we can get them born again, restored back to God and get them like Matthew to leave their lifestyle and follow Jesus, the Messiah. So please join in with us on that, you know, talking to people about it, get, get invites into their hands. If you're a part of our church, uh, there's going to be some digital invites that's going to be made available as well this week. Um, you know, text some people, call them, you know, pray for them, pray for lost people, unchurched people. And I'm believing God that we're going to just break some, um, some records uh, that we've had uh, different barriers we've had on these big days at this time of the year. And this will be our biggest one yet in February. I believe we can do that. And, uh, but ultimately it's about the salvation, the transformation of people. But then we talked more, just going back to the sermon series, we talked more about how that God has a four part, um, or a four step plan to see people who want to come to him, uh, really go through this steps of a journey to becoming people that are fully following Jesus. And these four things are on our walls at our church. We have them at different locations all over the place. But the first one is to know God. Second one is to find freedom. The third one is to discover purpose, their God-given purpose. And the fourth one is then ultimately to make a difference. Now, we got this from Chris Hodges some years back. We had some other things that we had. Uh, but when we heard him come with these statements, uh, it just so registered in our hearts. And it actually was saying the same thing we were saying, but in a better way. 
So, you know, by his permission, when he gave everybody that year permission to, to take it, to use it, we decided to do so. So we have it plastered on our walls and we, it has just served us well to be able to communicate vision. And we have a vision for our church. It's written out on our website. We, we go over it every so often. It's a little bit lengthy. It's where we're heading as a church, not just now, but in years ahead. We have a mission statement that we have that we say all the time. But these four steps that we've given people really help us to fulfill this in the people's lives. So the first one is knowing God. So we hammer that down, what it really means to have an authentic relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. We want it, We don't want it to be that one day people in our church who stand before the Lord, the Lord would say, depart from me, I never knew you. Man, I want to present the gospel so clearly and so accurately that people know God and God knows them, that they have an intimate relationship with him. Then we talked about how that as people are drafted on, then they need to find more freedom. Because if you're going to be on Jesus's team and do him well, uh, to, to have a, you know a winning team, so to speak, on this planet, then you need to get free from all of your past stuff. God wants you free from your past so that he, you can fulfill the purpose of why you're even here. I think so many times people try to fulfill purpose and they try to make a difference in people's lives, but because they have so much grave clothes, so to speak, and they have so much junk in the trunk of their faith vehicle, they have so much weights and sin that's hanging on to them, it really just keeps tripping them up and trapping them in life. And, and as a result, they don't really get to fulfill their purpose accurately and they're not really making a significant difference in somebody else's life just because of their of their past their past maybe sins addictions trauma uh, the issues of their life that they really need to get free from you have to answer these things of your past and get free from the things of your past so that you can move forward into your god-ordained purpose so we very much went into that and talked about that and how that happens and then we try to touch on these last two of course i got stuck on the freedom part a lot on those two two services that we did on on this past Sunday and the Sunday before last, apparently God needed us to do that. But then God wants us to discover our God-given purpose, and only your Creator can tell you who you are, and only your Creator can define who you are. Only your Creator can give you your identity. And the Bible says in Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified Bible that we are God's workmanship. We're His handiwork, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew to do the good works that He prearranged, predestined us to do. And so... You know, when we begin to understand our unique design and how God's made us and we begin to discover from God and the word what our purpose is, why we are here, what our callings are, our giftings are, our graces are, then when we get into our lane, so to speak, we begin to move in the lane that God has us in using the gifts, the talents, the abilities, the anointings that God's given us. That's when we make the most difference in somebody else's life. And of course, that last one, making a difference, uh, we really push that in our church to serve on our dream team, to serve on our dream, our teams that our serve teams that we have at church, not just on Sunday, but throughout the week. But um, God wants us to make a difference in people's lives in church, outside of church. But again, you can't do that if you don't authentically know God, obviously. But then number two, if, you're, if you haven't really gotten your freedom like you've needed to have, number three, if you haven't discovered your God-given purpose yet, if those things aren't answered, if those things are in place, you really won't make that difference. But when you do, it's not about perfection, it's about progress, and it's about understanding some things that God wants us to see. It doesn't take forever to get there. It's not like this is a 20-year journey before you can finally make a difference. I think these things can happen pretty quick in somebody's life. However, you're, there has to be intentionality, and people have to realize that God brought them on the team. The Bible says he arranged the members in the body as it pleased him. That, that Another uh, area of Scripture in Ephesians 4 says that God puts the people in on the body perfectly in the right places where they best fit at so that they can, they can fulfill their role. And I'll close with this thought. You know, when I played sports— you know, I, I very much had an understanding of, of what it meant to be a role player, and especially when I played basketball. Now, I'm not a very big guy. Uh, you know, I'm at, at the height of my height. Let me say it this way, because as you get older, you, you shrink a little bit. But I was five, eight and a quarter. I mean, that is really small. It's like spud, spud web height. If you even by knows who that is, who played in the NBA. In fact, he could dunk. I mean, it's amazing this guy could dunk, and he was in the NBA at that height. But, you know, I'm, I'm like that tall. So I realized that on my team, I had a role to play. And a lot of my role, really, was to was for defense 
and for being a scrapper. So I, uh, my role is was to, to was to, to to create steals, to play good defense, to shut down their top player, to get you know ball even rebounding. Even though I'm not very tall, if when you're scrappy, you can get rebounds, loose balls, just making things happen. That was my role. My role wasn't to be the shooter. Not that I couldn't shoot. I think I even got better at shooting after I got out of high school. Because I never, you know, really didn't concentrate a lot on that. Not that I didn't shoot, but my role was to do what, what, what my role was. And when I discovered that role, I began to play on the varsity team in the ninth grade. Now, I didn't start, but by the 10th grade, I was playing on varsity all the way through the time I graduated. But if I would have tried to get in somebody else's role, I wouldn't have fit that role very well because they had other people playing that role. And I would I probably would have just set the bench if I hadn't understood my role. So I, I say that to all of you that are out there, find out your role in the body of Christ. And if uh, the, it, it does obviously begin where God puts you at in church. So if God puts you into a church, then obviously that's the, that's the team that you're supposed to be playing on or being involved with. So if you're at Freedom Life Church and I'm your pastor, coach, whatever, you know, I'm trying to use this in the area of, of, of sports, but I'm your pastor, then you need to be on this team and understand your role on this team and your role. I'll tell you, it's not in, it's not in the stands. It's not on the bench. It's not on the sideline standing. Everybody on our team has got to get in the game. So there is an unlimited n- number of spots on our team. Everybody should be playing. And so you got to find your role and then do your role. If it's serving, uh, you know, with our children, then, then do that. If it's on our worship team, then do that. If it's on in the parking lot, then do that. All of us, when we when we give our uh, do our role, fulfill our role, and give our giftings and release what's in us, then it will really bring growth to that local body. It'll bring health to that local local body, and it'll expand us in the will of God. And we will definitely have a winning team here on the planet through our church. So let me encourage you along this line. Obviously, God has drafted you. If you have not responded to that draft call, please do come and know Jesus Christ. Be like Matthew, leave your past behind to follow him. But then let God take you through this process of really knowing him, of finding freedom in your life from from your past, and then beginning to discover your God-given purpose and and then ultimately make a difference. Because when you are serving others and using your gifts and talents to help other people be changed, that's when you feel fulfilled. It doesn't matter whether you're, you're in the pulpit or not, or whether you're laying hands and praying over somebody or not. When you're doing your role, it doesn't matter. Then you're making a difference. You're giving your supply, and that's where fulfillment comes. Amen. So that's been our, our series, and we wrapped it up this past Sunday. This Sunday, 9 30, 11 30, we start our Family Matters series. Again, you want to bring as many people as you possibly can, tell as many people as you possibly can, get there yourself. And if you're not, um, you know, a member of the church or serving in the church, then go through our growth track, go through that process. If you're not in the life group, get in the life group. If you've gone through the process of, of that, but you've not yet served on the dream team, start getting on a team, man. Yeah, get involved, get in the game, okay? You'll, you'll be so glad you did. So we sure love you. Thank you so much for joining in today. Make sure that you're subscribing to our YouTube channel. Press like as well. Tell your friends about it. Every Wednesday, 12 o'clock noon, this web, this this podcast shows up on our YouTube channel. So you can watch it any time after that. But uh, just want to remind you, plug in, connect, and tell others about it. Thank you so much for joining in. And we'll see you hopefully this Sunday.